Hello everyone, my name is Sachit Mahajan and I'm currently working as a researcher and lecturer at the Professorship of Computational Social Science at ETS Zurich. In this presentation, I will be giving an overview of the Airbox project, which is an open source air quality monitoring project led by Professor Linji Chen at Academia Seneca. I'll share some results and also discuss how this project has brought a fresh perspective on democratizing science for public good. Now, when we talk about environment monitoring solutions, the most common ones are the professional industry grade instruments used by the EPA or other governing bodies. These instruments are accurate, but usually very expensive. This makes it difficult to do a large scale deployment of such devices. Another method that is widely used is model-based simulations. These simulations focused on well-mixed solutions and are widely used for environment monitoring, but they are not very effective when it comes to microenvironments. Now, as part of the Airbox project, the research problem that we are addressing is the air quality monitoring, specifically focus on a particulate matter, for example, PM 2.5. Our, our approach integrates low-cost sensors and participatory sensing to obtain fine-grained PM2.5 measurements. Now, this project comes with a lot of challenges as well as opportunities like uh, sensor accuracy, device uh, performance, data reliability, system scalability, openness of the system, as well as building trust among multiple stakeholders. In the next few slides, I'll be giving more information about the participatory sensing framework, some of the results, as well as the impacts of the Airbox project. If we look at the air quality monitoring uh, system in, in Taiwan, before, ta before 2015, there were 77 air quality monitoring stations. At present, there are over 12,000 air quality monitoring devices deployed across Taiwan. Airbox is not only helping in obtaining fine grain measurements, but it's also complementing the official air quality monitoring network. To go a little bit deeper into the Airbox project, the work started with the investigation of low cost sensors for air quality monitoring. The idea was to find the most efficient and accurate sensors that would enable air quality monitoring by experts as well as non-experts. As you can see, uh, as you can see from the slide, over the year, over the years, the airbox uh, has changed uh, in terms of the types of sensors it's been using, as well as the overall design of the prototype. We have been paying a lot of attention on the state of the art uh, air quality monitoring sensors available, as well as making sure that all those sensors, they satisfy the scientific standards. The Airbox project also empowers the people by reducing the technical boundaries. This is done by making sure that all the hardware, software, and data is open source. Such an approach improves the outreach of the project and allows people from different backgrounds, such as makers, students, and other community members to use uh, the open resources to build their own monitoring devices and monitor their personal exposure. The key idea behind the Airbox project is to enable, empower, and engage. Airbox project fosters engagement by encouraging people to participate, collaborate, and contribute. The project combines internet of things and citizen science to do air quality monitoring and promote behavior change. Based on the recent data that we have, there are more than 20,000 devices deployed in 59 countries. This has been possible because of the collaborators from industry, academia, and many citizen science groups who have been actively participating in this project. Now, uh, giving a little bit more detail about the participatory sensing framework. So while developing this framework, the focus was on to use the state-of-the-art technology. 
In the beginning, we tested different PM2.5 sensors and evaluated their performance by comparing, the, comparing them with the reference instruments. This was done to make sure that we are using the best sensors for PM2.5 monitor. There were also several experiments that were conducted to understand the inter-unit sensitivity so that it could be easier to understand as well as analyze the performance of the sensors in different conditions. The current framework has a very well documented and easy to understand front end and back end. There are several visualization applications that are developed to interpret the data in the best possible way. An example on the right shows how the pollution spread across different regions. Such a system can potentially be used to understand the trend and finding pollution sources. All these visualization services are hosted on the Airbox website and they can be easily accessed as well as uh, shared uh, on social media or any different platforms by people from all, you know, from different backgrounds. It can be community members or scientists or even the policy makers or decision makers. Now, when, when designing such a participatory sensing framework, one of the biggest challenge that we faced was to make sure that the data was of the highest standards. To address that challenge, what we did was we designed a framework which we called anomaly detection framework. This was developed uh, to make sure that the data accuracy, the data, uh, the airbox data was accurate and reliable. The anomaly detection framework is capable of detecting real-time emissions uh, to perform device ranking as well as malfunction detection. The system ranks every airbox based on the quality of data and can also detect the malfunctioning device. This helps in making sure that the data that is shared with stakeholders is of the highest quality and meets the scientific standards. It also helps us in finding out the malfunctioning devices so that those devices can be either recalibrated or they can be replaced. This actually helps in maintaining the overall reliability of the whole participatory sensing framework as well as it maintains the standard of the data obtained from your boxes. Now discussing more uh, impact of the, the airbox. So we, we focused on the technological innovation. As we know, it's important to design techni technological solutions that are reliable and appropriate for a certain task. In airbox, for example, different prototypes were designed depending on their functionalities as well as the end user. One of the main part, main uh, feature of all these prototypes was that all the data was open. So anyone from, you know, irrespective of whether it was, whether the device is being used by researchers or they have been deployed in the schools or the citizen groups are using it, they could easily access the data and use that data for, for analysis, for, creating visualization applications or other uh, applications to make data informed decisions. As part of the Airbox project, we also have tried to make sure that, that we find the best possible way to convert raw data into tangible data. We have tried to leverage the data into more useful information for decision-making. On your screen, you can see on the left is a clean ear routing application. Mm -hmm. What this application does is it recommends you the health optimal route. For example, uh, if someone wants to go from point A to point B, it will show you three different routes. One is the fastest route, which is generally recommended by Google. Then it's the shortest path, which is based on the shortest path algorithm. And also we recommend like a clean air route which has the lowest PM 2.5 exposure. So this allows a user to decide based on their personal preference, what route they want, as well as they are more aware of the PM 2.5 level on all different routes. On the right-hand side, there's this uh, personalized alert service application. 
Using that application, a user can subscribe to a nearby PM 2.5 monitoring station. So every time uh, the PM 2.5 level goes over a particular threshold, they will get an alert service. Like they will get a message that, you know, the PM 2.5 levels are high. So maybe they should wear a mask or they should, they should try not to do outdoor activities during, during a certain period of time when there are pollution episodes. A good way to measure the impact of any citizen science study is to see whether there's an actual change based on the findings of the study. In the Airbox project, we observed how citizen science can be used as a catalyst for evoking behavior change by facilitating cooperation and coordination among multiple stakeholders. On the screen, you can see there are different examples. For example, on the left, there's an example of a PM 2.5 uh, indicator where, which have like these boards have been installed in elementary schools. And every time the PM 2.5 level goes over a particular threshold, so the outdoor activities are prohibited and the, uh, the it's like, it helps in making sure that the students are safe and they are not doing outdoor activities during pollution incidents. Also, uh, there are for, like, it's well known that in, in many countries in Asia, incense burning is one of the uh, most common activities based on the religious as well as cultural practices. Um, based on some of the data that we got from the sensors deployed around some temples, it was found that the PM 2.5 levels are really high during during those ceremonies where a lot of incense sticks are burned. So such data actually proved to be quite useful as people were able to, to see how bad the air quality levels were during the time when the incense sticks were burned. And it kind of helped in uh, understanding as well as creating frameworks or policies that reduced the use of incense sticks, as well as reduce the overall pollution levels around the temples. So what we have learned is that it's important to think global, but to act local. It's important to look for solutions that are locally relevant as well as acceptable. So what we learned from this project is that, you know, in the beginning, Airbox project was more like a DIY maker movement where people were using DIY tools to create airbox devices, but so it soon transformed into a do it together air quality monitoring framework. What we learned from this project is that the practice of participatory sensing can be considered to be an effective strategy to promote community engagement in scientific processes. It not only contributes to scientific knowledge generation, but it also addresses some major societal issues. So a collaboration between academia, researchers, citizen scientists, as well as decision makers can actually create sustainable solutions that can create common good. Looking into what's next for Airbox, we see a lot of opportunities. For example, there are continuous works that are targeted towards extending the functionalities of the device, for example, adding more sensors to it, working towards the IoT security, as well as adding edge computing to the device. In terms of the data, there, there are a lot of possibilities of using different AI techniques for data analysis and interpretation, as well as creating applications such as a forecasting system that can provide real-time forecast. Also in terms of applications, uh, there are, there's, there's a big opportunity to do international collaboration, as well as work with the existing collaborators to create more tools and applications that would encourage and help in data informed decision making. I would like to conclude this talk by focusing on some of the impacts, key impacts of the Airbox project. So based on the data that we have, uh, the PM 2.5, data set from Airbox is one of the most popular low cost PM 2.5 data sets in the world with almost three hits per second and around 40 gigabytes data per day. 
Uh, the fine grained data from the airbox has been widely used by people from different backgrounds. So it's not just limited to people from uh, internal things uh, background, but also people from medical background have been using the data. The success of airbox has opened up doors for micro environment monitoring, for example, water quality, noise and odor. Also, the outreach activities have helped in building more collaborations. For example, there are some regular collaborations with researchers in the US, um, in Europe, in Southeast Asia, and the other institutional partners across different countries have been collaborating to, to further improve the earbox as well as the whole participatory sensing framework. And we are looking forward to to deepen our research, you know, by, by focusing on other technologies such as edge computing, also focusing on the IoT security and other key issues that are associated with low cost sensing. Um, I would like to thank everyone for uh, listening to my talk and I would be happy to take any questions. Thank you.